Welcome to Whitestone Missionary Baptist Church live on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks to our members in Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, California, Pennsylvania, Georgia, 
Florida, New York, Louisiana, Bangkok, Thailand, and friends in 10 other states. Special thoughts and prayers go out to Brother Kirk Bays and Dr. Brett Bays, and they send their love uh, to Whitestone. Special prayers and thoughts also for the families of the late Reverend Lawrence Boxdale, Roy Hopgood, Barbara Irvin, uh, Dorothy Williams, the Hancock and Jones family, Ronald Lane, Edward Henderson, Alondre Henderson, Robin and Ruth Love, Adrian Henderson, Elsie and Evelyn Smith, William Hughes, Leah Skywalker, Larry Walker, Reba Walker, Juanita Crenshaw, Tamika Wright, Maurice and Helen Vernon, uh, Tamiko Sutton, Latoya McKinney, Eartha Faye Logan, Delbert Hoseman, Delbert Jones, Marilyn Mosby, Charmaine Thompson, Phyllis Wilson, Elias Wilson, Jennifer Gibson, Bertha Looney, Catherine and Charles Fox, Chelsea Lane Boyd, Brittany Figueroa, Margaret, Margaret Cole, Margaret Coleman, John Williams, Mr. and Mrs. Coulter, Larry Wilson, Benny Neal, Brittany Stoner, Heather Robinson, Chief Davis, Sheriff Bonner, Kristen Partee, Mayor Strickland and Harris, Kim Nicholson, Jerry and Sherry Wright, Reggie and Lisa Walton, uh, the Bedell family, Mary Alice Carter, Emily D. Wright, Barbara Carter, Charlie Walton, James Crenshaw, Almita and Janessa Henderson, Rodis Thompson, Joyce Lindsay, Desi Lane, uh, Jadia uh, Thomas, Ann Simleton, Jasmine Thomas, Valerie Thomas, Felicia Boyd, Sharon Rogers, Daryl Hill, Demika or Derika Johnson, Deborah, Bobo, Joseph Proctor, Jamie Cliston, Gary Hubbard, Charisse Lobbin, William Tobert, Verdell Baker, Teresa Baker, Antonio Gardner, Marshall Sanders, Sean Jackson, Crystal McGee, May McGee, Robert and Glenda Partee, Renee Hawkins, Lonnie and Shasta Coleman, Jalen Dawson, Mary McKenzie, Margot and Leon Williams, Ida Duggar, Daniel Drain, Bill and Juanita Harris, Dr. Andrew Jackson, Laura Williams, Mallory Catlett, Rod and Felicia Carey, James Brown, Stephen Ferris, James Ellis, Vera Self, Adeline Reed, Gloria and Jennifer Hayes, uh, Sharon Colbert, Willie and Louise Lester, Willie May and Carl Brumley, Jimmy and Lorraine Walton, uh, Robert uh, Roger Brown, Mary Cobb, Maddie Green, Flanoid Harris, Chris Walton, Ed Lindsay, first, second, and third, Grady Henderson, George War, Albert Johnson, Paula Phillips, Will Smith, James Perry, Tim Collins, Drs. Greg Pope and Adam Bond, the Chilt family, Robert Haley, Sharita and Sylvia Buxton, Gloria West William, Deneen Austin, Glenn and Lisa Palmer, Louis Simmons, Terry Simmons, George Flags, Ann, Michael, James, Connie, and Wayne Sturgis. Priscilla Galloway, Chloe, and Jasmine Stevens, Alonzo and Linda Stevens, Florence Guy, Trudy Rogers, Valerie Johnson, Charles Dawson, the first and second, May Dawson, Cedric Dawson, Dan Marinese, Richard Shields, Jackie White, Louis Beasley, Stanley Dandridge, Romero Hobbs, Cedric Lawson, O.C. Collins, Cynthia Johnson, Miles Bowens, Charles Mauro, Wayne Petrie, William Dunn, Eric Doug, and Henry Baskin. Ann and Tony Taylor, T.C. Parson, Melvin Parson, Stephanie Strada, Dolores Strada, Hazel Hargrove, Brittany Taylor, Carl Jackson, James Knox, Cordell Jones, Sonny Hicks, Redonna Sachs, Marvin Cowan, Deborah and Willie Cole, Benjamin and Edna Taylor, Arte Jones, Freeman and Lily Edmonds, Mary Taylor, Reggie Simmons, Amos Williams, T.J. Wilburn, Jimmy Sweet, uh, Ed Smith, Linda Pate, Dolores Rose, Rose Taylor, Katira Taylor, Ernest Williams, the Cook, Mace, Wright, Brown, and Mitchell families, Bill Mitchell, Curtis Tim, uh, Paul and Francine Shivers, James Jones, Mike Jones, Gina Higgins, Emma Farris, Jeremy Farris, Dave Manley, Jesse Chapman, Charles Manning, Montreal Winfrey, Beatrice Moss, Donald Hunt, Josephine Marshall, Jamie Stevens, Cecilia Cole, Cecil Brown, Willie Wilson, Cynthia Johnson, Philip and Sherry Underwood, John Brown, Rhonda Cook, A.J. Lumpkin, Pearl Harris, Kim Watts, Bernice Burden, Essie Jones, Annie Rice, Dar Darnell and Denise Yancey, 
Patricia, Sandra, and Viola Wright, Lily, Lily G. Morgan, Florence Jefferson, Francis Wright Moore, Ty Rogers, Chris Bridges, Mabel Caesar, Mabel Pleasure, Sam Ely, C.R. Jones, Jackie Parson, Jackie Baker, Cherie Yancey, Edna Martin, Edna Maxwell, Elijah and Carolyn Brooks, Riddell and Ollie Smith, Donald and Lucille Landry, Irene Wig, Sierra Glass, Anthony Myrick, uh, Brian Hawkins Jr. and Senior, Brandon Hawkins, Felicia Taylor, Andrew Burns, Kena and Calvin Crawford, Gracie Hughes, Catherine Winfrey, Peggy Davis, Glenda Patty, Maddie Campbell, Myra Felix, Netta Thomas, Ron and Ruby Dawson, Michael Guyton, Joyce Hawkins, Joanne Carpenter, Willie Carpenter, Josiah Baxter, Yvonne Arthur, Willie Steen Brown, Frank Thomas Jr., Bertha Rogers, Gwen Brownlee, Emma Bibbs, and Richard Williams, also Lysandra Smith, Tampa Gardner, Kaylin Miller, Tiffany Thornton, Eric Johnson, Robert Johnson, Burnell Morgan, Harry James, Javier Mills, and Latoya McKinney, friends and members, uh, we invite you now to join us as we continue in worship with songs of praises unto our God. <laughs> Don't be afraid. 
to all the mothers. Uh, after a little conference, uh, my devotion partner and I uh, changed the scripture. We had first decided on Proverbs 31, 10 to 15. And after he read it, he decided to do Proverbs 31, 25 to 28. But if in your leisure time, if you haven't read it, read it please because it's describing some virtuous women. Uh -huh. And in uh, biblical times, a virtuous woman was a woman of strength. And as we recall our bringing up, most of our mothers were more women of color and made of strength. Proverbs 31, 25 to 28. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it reads, Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. Uh -huh. She opens her mouth with wisdom, mm -hmm. and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Yes, sir. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 25 to 28. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 We will pray. Mm -hmm. This morning, our Heavenly Father, a few of your humble servants have come boldly around the throne of grace. Uh -huh. Father, we come boldly when we come on, giving you praise, glory, and honor because you are deserving. Father, we ask your blessings upon the ones that are here and traveling worship for the ones that are on the way. And please touch the hearts of those that have no desire be part of your kingdom. Let them know that it's time to turn around because we're living in perilous times. Well, Father, we ask your blessings upon the sick, the sick and the bereaved. And Father, we ask you to touch the hearts of your children who plan and carry out your yes, sure. Touch them, Father, let them know that the reckoning day is coming. Yes. Father, we ask your blessings upon our pastor, his family, Please give him the courage to keep standing before your people and declaring yes. that the ways of the sin is death yes. and the gift of God is eternal life through yes. Jesus Christ. And Father, when we've done all that you have in our hands, mm -hmm. we ask that you receive us in your kingdom with a well done. These are all blessings, I ask in the name of Jesus, by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Lord.
For there is no respect of person with God. Amen. When the Lord has blessed us and read us, hear us, and do us of his word. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day, child of mothers. It is prayer time. The best time. Shall we begin? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another day. We want to thank you for watching over us as we rest. We want to thank you, Father, for able enough to be here among one another once again. Because we know that it's not promised. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless each and every one that's here. In the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless Dr. Wright yes, and his family. Yes, Give him the, the spirit to guide us on. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just bless the sick and shedding. Yes, For there's many. Bless those that are on the road trying to make it to a destination. Bless, bless the one that's caught up in the war in Ukraine and all around the world. Bless the hungry. Heavenly Father, you created all of us and we thank you for it. You made us in your image. You've given us the word, the place in our hearts so we could share it to us others. And we thank you for it. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us more than we deserve. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. But yet, we're still not giving you the thanks and honor that you deserve. Yes. So we just want to say thank you, Lord. Yes. And just keep on blessing us and have it patient with us. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. amen.
Um, happy Mother's Day. Amen. To not only you in the building, but to those who are tuned in live on Facebook and YouTube. And of course, anyone who is working now, uh, some people pull it up late on at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would advise you to do it while you're working. But do tune in. And right. God bless you. To all of my fellow Christians, Deacon Jackson, Deacon Stevens and Knox, to the Cook, Mace, and Mitchell families, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. And you'll notice out of these three verses that I read, the key the word is honor, call to honor God's presence. Most of my life I've heard people say they want to pray God into the church, pray God into Memphis, but uh, I don't want to be in Memphis if God is not there. And we think it's bad, and we think crime is bad, but if God is not present, it would be ten times as bad. And for those of us who are talking about defunct or debunk the police, department, uh, you're not thinking. I know there's some uh, less than desirable cops or policemen, but all of them are not bad. 95% of them are doing what they should do. But then we have to stop committing the crime. And uh, the reason that I carry my driver's license in my right coat pocket is if they flash the light, I can take it out before I'm stopped, take it out so he can reach and get it, so he can see my palm. Uh -huh. uh, there's no point in agitating people. They're already human beings like you are. They are afraid. And you won't see a 90-year-old police officer stopping you in a traffic jam. And so they're young, and they're somebody's sons, and they're somebody's grandson, somebody's husband, somebody's a relative or nephew or niece, they don't want to be shot down. They don't know what you or I have. Right. And sometimes we get up on the wrong side of the bed and we say something to him, he says something to us, and then he becomes a man. He's no longer a police officer. Right. And you spit on him, he becomes a man. Right. Then he becomes an animal. And if you push any one of us too far, you'll find out just who we are. Right. I hear people talking about what I wouldn't do. You don't know what you'll do. That's Mr. Richard Bradford, Brother Jackson, used to tell me, he said, I hear you saying what you're not going to do, but pray to God that you don't be in the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just treat everybody's children with respect. Yeah. Treat everybody's daughter with respect. Treat everybody's mama with respect. Yes, sir. Franklin Roosevelt, one of the greatest presidents this United States has known, said, if you treat people right, 95% of Time they will treat you right. Well, Sometimes it pays just to be quiet. Yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah. And those of us who have been married, we know sometimes it just pays to go on and watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. Just go on and watch TV. You like Daddy used to do, go out under the pecan tree and just sit there. He said, Come and go with me to my father's house. That's what he would do. And if he come back in the front door and mama started him again, he just go out the back door and sit on the china bear tree. And he told me, boy, you got to learn to keep your mouth closed. Sometimes. Sometime. Yes. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Honor. Yes, sir. Means respect. Yes, it does. Today, 2022, we are called and challenged to be committed in honoring God's presence. Well, Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Speak, Almighty God, from the page of this text, and we will respond in kind. Help us, O oh Lord. Strengthen us when we're weak. Mm -hmm. Forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, and iniquities. Help us to learn how to love like Jesus loves us. Uh -huh. And we thank you for your love and grace and mercy. For, Lord, we know we do not deserve any blessing that you give us. But it's out of your loving kindness and tender mercy that you continue to bless us each day. In spite of us, in spite of our sins and our wickedness. Help us understand that we need you. You don't need us. Thank you, O Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Why stone to the McGee sisters who confess faith in Christ and are scheduled for baptism at the end of the month or on the fourth Sunday at 1050? In honor of Mother's Day, Sister Bailey and Brother Bailey in Jackson, Dr. Charles Stanley, First Baptist pastor in Atlanta, Georgia. Some of you are familiar with him. He's been pastoring as long as many of you have been in the world. He says this in honor as a tribute to Mother's Day, or motherhood. He said, motherhood is a great honor and privilege, yet it is also synonymous with servanthood. Every day, women are called upon to selflessly meet the needs of their families. Right. When they are awake at night nursing a baby, when they are spending their time and money on less than grateful teenagers, preparing meals, moms continually put others before themselves. Well, that's an act of servanthood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Joyce Myers, some of you are familiar with her, television evangelist and minister. She says, start your week off right by getting back to what is really important, honoring God. Over in St. John, chapter 5, verse 23, well. Jesus said that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He or she that honors not the Son honors not the Father who has sent him. Mm -hmm. Margaret Minix, M-I-N-N-I-C-K-S, on June 15, 2014, said, God is honored by our faith in him. Mm -hmm. We dishonor God by a lack of faith. Well. Keep in mind, in this text, or these two texts, three verses, David, the author, mm -hmm. as far as we know, is calling and challenging us in this 21st century to give God the honor do his name. Well. Now notice he says give God the honor do him. Mm -hmm. We owe him. Yes. Right. Yes. Now when I hear somebody and I've heard it all my life and I raise myself up by my own bootstrap. Well. Where did you get the bootstrap? <laughs> And where did you get the boots? <laughs> and yes, Brother Wright, where did you get the power and the muscle yeah, yeah, yeah. to even even try to think you raised yourself? Well. And where did you get the lips to tell that lie? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Wright. Come on, Come on now. Come on. Yeah. Keep in mind, David is calling and challenging us. Now, it's not easy to give God the honor he deserves. Well. You might say, well, oh, yes, I give God honor. I go to church every Sunday. I, I'm there all the time. But he's talking about give God the honor daily. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Am I right about it? Does yes. God feed you every day? Yes. Does not he allow us to breathe his oxygen every day? Yes. He doesn't turn the oxygen on only on Sunday at 11 o'clock. <laughs> doesn't he allow us to walk on his earth? Yes. Doesn't he allow us to eat? Whether we like it or not, he allows us to eat, and we have some choices. Yeah. Keep in mind, in this text, David is calling and challenging us to give God the honor due his name. Yes, sir. In the process, we are honoring God's holy presence. Uh -huh. yes. See, God is everywhere at all times. Well. Even when we dishonor him, when we lack faith in him, God is still present in our lives. Yes, yes. In the process, we are honoring God's holy presence. We give him respect. When we honor him, that means we're giving him respect, love, and praise for just simply being God. Well, it's nice to praise him while we're in this building or in the context of a bunch of believers in Christ or so-called professed believers in Christ, but it's another thing to praise him all through the day and at night and on Saturday night, Monday night, Tuesday morning. It's nice to praise him all the time. If you have a bologna sandwich, praise him for it. Some folk have nothing to eat. And we were complaining about the hamburger wasn't big enough. They didn't put enough lettuce on it. And some folk were starving to death. And we're complaining about the biscuit is not soft enough. Yes, sir. 
Come on, Dr. I hear it all the time. <laughs> these young people have a tough time with some of us old boogers. <laughs> these young people at these fast food, I mean, it's fast food, it's fast enough, it's too fast, really, for our health. And you want the burger fixed like yesterday. A hog doesn't grow overnight. Well, <laughs> takes months to grow a hog. Yes, sir. Now I understand, according to Brother Cole, a meat expert, they make these animals grow bigger in two months. Go ahead. So they shoot them with some kind of vitamins and making them swell up, and we're swelling up. Go ahead. Right, right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> is it true that we are what we eat? Yeah. If the hog is wild and crazy and we like, and I love bacon. <laughs> God's presence alone speaks by. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, Samuel Davies, a Presbyterian evangelist back in the 1700s, wrote a hymn called Great God of Wonders. Well. Verse 1, I lifted from that collection of, of hymns, Great God of Wonders, all by ways are matchless, godlike, and divine, uh, but the fair glories of thy grace, more godlike and unrivaled shine, more godlike and unrivaled shine. There's no one that can equal to God. No one. Three times he says in this one verse that God has no rivals. No. No. And we should never, I heard a young man a couple of weeks, a couple of uh, last month, talking about the man upstairs, the dude upstairs. That's a, that's open and disrespect for God. He's not a dude. That's right. That's but we so often live life so ragged and talking and using any kind of language, we refer to God as a dude upstairs. Go ahead. That's why we be careful what we practice. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. God deserves more than being called a dude. That's right. Right. Matter of fact, a dude is not the result of God in the first place. Well, Isaac Watts, some of you are familiar with him, born 1674, passed away in 1748, wrote, uh, Wide as the world is thy command. Yes, sir. Well, he's honoring God in the song. He's singing to God. He's not singing to people. He's singing to God. When we are singing to God, when we're praising his name, we ought to be focused on God and not ourselves. We ought to be focused on not the singer, but who we are singing about. Wide as the world is thy command, vast as eternity thy love, firm as a rock thy truth must stand when rolling yes. years shall cease to move. Yes, sir. Watch yes, said in verse 1 of that same hymn, ye nations, means all people. Uh -huh. Doesn't matter about the race, doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat or Independent, doesn't matter whether you're black, white, yellow or brown, doesn't matter whether you're Chinese or African, it doesn't matter, ye nations bow with sacred joy. Yes. And notice that phrase, bow with sacred joy. Sacred means you're talking about God. Uh -huh. You're talking about holiness and perfection. You're talking about eternity. And here, he, the writer, expresses uh, a thought that should register in all of our hearts and minds. That is honor he's expressing for God. For sacred joy means that's a joy that's far different than the honor for anyone and anything else on earth or in this world or universe. All right. Church, there's another hymn which was collected by Brown and Norton. It is called, Holy God, We Praise Thy Name. All right. It is my understanding that the origin of this hymn began in the fourth century. Well. We didn't just get here. The human didn't just get here. Well. Well. Brown and Norton said, but whatever its origin, Christians have been singing versions of this hymn for more than 1,500 years. Yes, well, yeah. Verse 4 of that hymn, Holy Father, mm -hmm. Holy Son, see the honor, uh -huh. see the respect that the writers all give. I'm using them multiple writers to show you how they spent time using their gifts that God gave them to honor him for the gifts they had. And they're saying, Holy Father, Holy Son, Holy Spirit. There's three. Holy God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And three, what we name thee, he says, though in essence only one undivided God. We claim thee and adoring bend the knee while we owe 
of why we own the mystery. And this was written by Ignace France, 1719 to 1790, translated so we could read it in the 21st century by Word. Clarence Walworth. He was born in 1820, passed away in 1900, before any of us in here were born. Mm -hmm. My friends and fellow Christians, young and old, the late Roy Gingrich commented, commented Dr. Vaughn, on Psalm 29. If you would think carefully, or if we would think carefully, as we read these words, notice David is more convinced than ever that God is due all honor because of his great power. Well. Matchless power. His holiness, and holiness of God means his perfection, his perfect. Mm -hmm. If God has a flaw, who of us could even find out? Well, yeah. We're too, we have too many flaws to even find out. Yeah. Well. That's why it behooves us in the congregation to not spend time trying to check on somebody else's flaws because you already got one because you're busy watching for somebody else's flaws. <laughs> Jesus said you're, uh, you're trying to complain about the little speck in somebody else's eye and you forgot about that law that's in your eye. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, it's all right. Yes, sir. Come on now. David is more convinced than ever that God is due all our because of his great power and holiness, which means he's perfect, excellent, and great. Oh, how excellent is thy name. David said in another text, he said, oh, how excellent is your name. Just your name alone creates in my mind that you are beyond humanity. But therefore, when you refer to God as a dude, young folk, upstairs, He's not just upstairs, he's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. David said in another text, if I went down into the bowels of hell, he's down there. Yeah. Yeah. If I went and to the highest mountain, he's there. If I went to the highest oak tree in the yeah. tip top, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. God is absolutely flawless. Yes, yes. Uh, don't get upset with me. I'm just saying what God really is. Yeah. 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 God is so great and so perfect and holy until we ought to just tremble by just walking on his earth. Amen. Because God is the God of life and death. Well, At any point, he can strike us dead. Yes, sir. And in history, in the Bible, it was shown where God would strike some folk dead. Yes, they were eating his food and complaining about it's not right, it's not enough. And God smote the breath and spent some time and thank you, Jesus. No for what we have to eat. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Young people, you ought to think about that when you complain about what mama fixed. Well, she's well, making I, a small income and she's fixing the food best that she can and you complain about, I don't like this. Well, Learn to like it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because you ought to be thankful you got a mother yeah, yeah. who has time and the willpower to cook some food for you. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy those pinto beans. Enjoy that cornbread. Enjoy those collard greens. Enjoy those neck bones. Some children don't have neck bones. Some children don't have a pork chop. Some folk got them and they don't know what to do. Some folk can't even cook. But thank God that somebody loves you enough to give you a crumb of bread. Hallelujah. Perhaps say again, which David had excellent purpose. He had an excellent purpose. And an excellent reason for calling on us in this century. Mm -hmm. See, the ones who he was writing to in that time period in the ancient world, uh, he was calling on them, but the text is left for us. Well, so he calls on us through his spirit. See, David's spirit is alive, and he's calling on us from the text, saying, we ought to honor God without reservations. Yeah. Well, Gendrich went on and added, this song uh, pictures a terrifying, ferocious, powerful storm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm coming down upon the mountains of Lebanon and moving uh, southward to the southern areas of Palestine. Uh -huh. Picture, I'm looking north and we turn around, I'm facing south. Mm -hmm. And the storm is coming and moving southward to southern east or the southern areas of Palestine. Uh -huh. And Gendry says where it spins itself and is replaced by a calm and a peace. Well, well. 
It may be storming in your life now. But there's a peace coming. Yes, sir. Yeah. You may be troubled today. Yes, sir. You may be troubled this hour. Your heart may be torn and twisted. Well, your mind may be unregulated, but there is a peace coming if yes. you just trust God. Yeah. And everybody goes through some trouble. Yes, sir. That's what our Sunday school lesson this week is talking about. Everybody feels pain. Everybody at some point feels grief. Yes. There's always something going on in our lives yes. that causes us to have to cry and feel pain yes. and suffer. Yes. But there's a peace coming. There's yes. a calm that's coming in our yes, lives. And I believe that the reason that we have the troubles we have, God is reminding us this is not your home. Go ahead. Go ahead. My son is preparing a place for you right now. And if you get too comfortable here, you might not want to leave. You might not be willing to listen to what I got to say. Every now and then when God allows you to get knocked down on your back, then you'll start to say, Lord, Go ahead. Lord, what have I done? Yes, sir. And sometimes stuff happens in your life you had nothing to do with. Yes. God is testing us. Right. And I'm glad he tests me every now and then. Right. The theme for our Sunday school series for this quarter, the spring quarter, is tested by a, uh, tested by a servant. Yes. Tested. Yes. Moses was uh, the testimony of a tested servant. Yes. Uh -huh. Moses was tested over and over. Yeah, yeah. So you don't get away. I don't know how many names you put on the church roll. How many times you join, you're going to have some rough times. Yeah. Didn't Jesus have some rough times? Yeah. Came to feed the hungry. Yeah. Came to give sight to the blind. Came to uh, bring some cheer in folks' lives. And yet he encountered more hell than anybody else. Right. But see, that's Satan working. Uh, the witnessing Gentry said uh, by David of uh, such a storm may have been the occasion uh, for his writing this song. What David seems to be suggesting to us today, mm -hmm. May 8th, 2022, is that no matter how strong and how powerful the storm of life might be for us, God sits high above on his throne. And he knows what's happening. Well, he knows the frustration you have right now. Yes, sir. I don't know your frustration, but he knows. I don't know what has happened at your house or the past few days, but he knows. Yeah. I don't know how your body is feeling right now, but he knows. Yeah. Uh, he knows that your foot might be aching right now. He knows your heart may be aching. He knows that tears, you're doing everything you can to hold back tears. He knows, and that's good news that he knows. Just like Satan knows, he's protecting you from Satan. Right. Even in the midst of such storm, the Lord is able to bring his people through to safety. Well, Even if our bodies are killed, uh, the part that God really wants is never harm. See, God really wants our soul. Well, That's why he sent Jesus to Cameron right. uh, to save us, uh, save our souls. Yeah. And more than anything else, the Lord Almighty wants you and me to honor him uh, with daily uh, praise, not just on Sunday morning, but every day. Oh, yeah. And we are here right now after having gone through a week not knowing how close we've been to danger. You never know. Well, uh, you never know what robber came by your door and God blocked yeah. You never know who was about to carjack you in the front of Crowley and God somehow blocked him for a reason. You just never know. You never know who was waiting uh, to snatch your last dollar from you, but God blocked him some kind of way. Uh -huh. Sometimes we're trying to go somewhere. I'm planning to go to the shopping center at 11 o'clock, and I didn't get there till 2 o'clock. And then you discover there was a powerful shootout there where you would have been at 11 o'clock. God blocked. He's protecting us. That's right. That's right. Yet the Lord, through his angels' watchful eyes, well, have kept us safe and secure for his reason. Uh -huh. We're not here because of our goodness. Not because of our perfection, not because of our righteousness, but because he willed it that we stay here well. a little longer. Seeing the word give in the text, give unto him. Give, give. It should remind us that we can do it. Well. Uh, yes, we can give God honor. We are able to and have good reason to accept uh, the call and challenge to honor God's holy presence. Well. For he has been too good. Uh -huh. To all of us, not just yeah, me. That's right. It, it's nice to talk 
It's nice for me to say God has been really good to me, but he's been too good to all of us. Yes. Well, yeah. You know, I, I might not have what my brother has, but he's still been good to me. Yeah. I may have to catch him ATA every day, but he's still good to me. Yeah. Oh, he's good to us. He's better to us than we should be. Yeah. He's given us more than we deserve. Yeah. According to the rule of justice, we shouldn't even be allowed to live. Yeah. But because of his grace and mercy, he has spared us and allowed us to walk and live and breathe some more of his air. Not for our own righteousness, but yeah. give us time to get straight. Well, uh, for he has been too good oh, yeah. to all of us. Yeah. Yes, life offers us up some bad times, some bad days and mm -hmm. nights. But through it all, God has been more than gracious to us. Well, yeah. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but well. as I reflect on my own life and match it up with the scriptures, uh, I should have been gone a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Maybe you so righteous that... Uh, you will live on and God can't stop you, but I'm here to tell you that he can stop you. Yes, and he can get that foolishness out of your mind that you are all this and all of that. Yes. For sin interferes with our lives every day well. that we walk God's earth. Yeah. But God is open to our prayers of forgiveness mm -hmm. and our call for restoration. Yeah. Thomas Burke said, uh, Dr. Bond, that prayer crowns God with honor. You know, we honor God when we pray. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the first thing some people say, well, if he already knows what we need, that's what you just told me, Pastor. You said he sees everything. Well, why do I need to tell him what he already sees? But it honors him that we take the time yeah. uh, right. to just bow to him. Yeah. And you might say, well, he's awfully selfish. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. He has the right. Yes, sir. He's already stated that I yeah. am a jealous God. Yes, sir. Put no other gods before me for I created this world. I made you who you are. Now he can do that. Yes, sir. Who of us can challenge him? You know, there's been some great men tried to challenge God and say, well, God, I think you got some things wrong, but what did God do to him? Stuff him right out. Well, you yeah. remember when they tried to build the tower and I'm going my way to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then they got to the point they couldn't understand what each other was saying. Yeah. You see, my point is you can't beat God. Not at all. God's arms are too long for us to box with yeah. him. Yeah. Stop messing with God. Yeah. Just honor him, bow before him. Thomas Burke said prayer crowns God with honor and glory to his name. Yeah. And God crowns prayer with assurance and comfort. Uh, the most prayerful souls in this world are the most assured souls. Uh -huh. In this text, we see honor and majesty, uh -huh. and we see the phrase strength and beauty, and we see the phrase glory and strength. Uh -huh. Glory means God's brightness, God's splendor, his beauty, his radiance, his brilliance, and his uh, unmatched greatness. Uh -huh. And then we see strength in the verses. Strength means energy. Uh, what do you think the lightning and the thunder get as energy? What do you think? The power of the wind comes from. The wind just blow on his own. God's in there. He blows from south and north and east and west. God blows. God allows the sun to shine as hot as he wanted to shine. He allows the moon to shine as bright as he wanted to shine. He allows the animals to roam the forest. He allows the sea creatures to roam the sea. He allows the birds of the air to fly wherever they go. A blue jay can just all of a sudden just jump up and fly away. Go ahead. I only wish I could do that. He can fly on up to St. Louis and just take a day off. Man. He can fly over to Vicksburg and an eagle can just fly from here to Texas and he's all right. Well, but God didn't give us that power. God made us who we are. Well, but God didn't send Jesus uh, to the cross for the eagle right. or the blue jay. Well, he sent him to the cross for us. Well, he made us in his own likeness yes, and image. And see, God's brilliance and God's strength and power and majesty, his honor, he has loaded us daily with benefits that we should never uh, forget. God gives us so much that we can't fully appreciate it. Well, yeah. Oh, in Psalm 96, at verse 6, David uh, suggests that strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Well, well. In his sanctuary. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Well, well. God's sanctuary indicates his divine presence. Right. Wherever God is, that's his sanctuary. Right. Wherever God is, it is a safe place. Mm -hmm. That's what sanctuary, the root meaning of sanctuary, a safe place. Uh -huh. Wherever God resides, it is a holy place and safe from the enemy of humankind. 
David, in his first three lines of this 29th Psalm, calls and challenges us by saying, Give God his due to honor his name, uh -huh. to acknowledge God's holy presence. Yeah. Yes, we are called on to honor motherhood today. Mm -hmm. Later on this month, we will be called on to honor men and women who've lost their physical lives in battles fought on behalf of this country. Yeah. Yeah. We are always called upon to honor our leaders, our governors, our mayors, our senators and Congress people we we'll are call upon to honor our city council members and our county commissioners. We will call uh, to honor our aldermen and we will call to honor our county supervisors. And also we will call to honor our teachers, our school teachers and our uh, professors in college and higher education. Uh, today, however, is a good day to remember that we are called on and challenged to honor our God, uh, the God of life and death. He is, he has, or he is in Jesus, our salvation Real. for our lost soul. Old honest Abe Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation way back in January 1, 1863, but it could not save our souls. Uh, it is said that the United States Constitution grants us a certain amount of freedom and privileges, but I'm saying it cannot free our souls and well. prepare them for the kingdom coming. Well. David is saying from the page of these texts, uh, we owe God honor, which means we owe him some praise, well. we owe him some thanksgiving, and not just on the fourth Thursday of November, we owe him some praise every Thursday. Well. And I'm saying we owe him some praise every day. Yes, and I'm saying further, we owe him some praise every hour. Yes, because as the songwriter says, I need thee yes, every hour. But I'm saying I need him all the time. Yes, I can't afford for him to be absent one minute because without him, I have no life. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, you and I uh, can honor God's presence by how we live. Well, I know folks don't like to hear that. We can honor God's presence by living it with dignity. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. uh, respect for God and respect for self. And I'm convinced that if I don't respect myself, I'm not going to respect God or people. Amen. Amen. And if I respect God, I'm going to respect myself and people. Yes. See, when you see people carjacking an 85-year-old lady or a 25-year-old lady, they have no respect for self or the people or God. Yes. See, you're not going to hurt somebody if you respect God. If you respect God, he'll teach you how to respect self and other folk. Yes. See, so when you misuse somebody, you talk to somebody any kind of way, you are failing to respect self, God, and those people. Well. And therefore, if you have no respect for yourself, you can't have anything for anybody else. Yes, sir. So we can honor God by uh, treating one another as God treats us. Well. An unknown writer said, when we honor and value ourselves, we are honoring God's presence mm -hmm. because we are his creation, a beautiful reflection of him. Mm -hmm. Sin had left a crimson stain mm -hmm. on our soul. But Jesus, son of God, Mary's little baby boy, went to Calvary mm -hmm. uh, one Friday evening yeah. Yeah. and paid for our sins against the Holy Father. Well, uh, Elvina Mabel Hall, 1820 to 1889, said, I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Uh -huh. Child of weakness, watch and pray, find in me time all in all, and when before the throne I stand in him complete. Mm -hmm. Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall repeat and repeat, and still repeat, Jesus paid it all. Yeah. All to him I owe. Yes, Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. God bless you. The door is open. Amen. We extend the invitation to church membership, candidate for baptism. Or you may have the, ask the church a request that they restore your membership. And if you're not in this building at this time, or uh, you're not on the God, you may write us or call us, or you may go to somebody in the family. I don't care how big your family is, there's at least one faithful person that is a Christian in your family. I don't care where.
What kind of neighborhood you live in that is a Christian living on your street? Go to somebody and say, what can I do to get my soul saved? I want to give my life to Jesus because I owe it all of everything. Environment. 
just don't, if you're in the barbershop and somebody's spewing out a lot of foolishness and rocking and ready to fight, just, you know, make your appointment another time. Walk on out. You know, I mean, because you may be sitting there innocent and when they get to fighting, they don't care who they hit. So uh, I would just, uh, you know, get my hair cut another time. I get my hair fixed or I get my wig another time. So, uh, well, I understand. I take that wig and get them fixed. So I would know about that. Uh, but some men wear wigs. Um, but avoid hostile environment. If you're on break at work and you know that somebody got a spur in their sack, you know, they got a spur. They'll set on a spur this morning. Well, you know that. You recognize that. You don't know what their troubles are. You don't know what's going on. Just don't go in the break room with it. Eat your sandwich on the outside somewhere. And uh, if you want to go on a smoke break and somebody's out there and you know they don't like you, say, why would you want to go out there? They're going to say, you put that smoke on me. Just put the cigarette up and go on. And if you, got, if you ride the bus, these are just examples. If you ride the bus and you see that devil on that bus going to pick at you, just don't get on that bus. You might be a late, hour late getting home, but it's better than getting on that bus. And uh, you don't want to fight anybody because when they're ready to fight, they're ready to fight. And, uh, but pray for them because you never know what's troubling them and what is happening uh, to them. And, uh, but avoid, when possible, hostile people and hostile environment. And to Whitestone, to members and our friends, wherever you are, Arizona, uh, Ms. Hargrove, one of my first cousins, uh, thank you for sending the contribution that you do every week. We're able to continue to partner with eight ministries every month from Red Cross to World Vision, every month we never miss because you are faithful and committed and we're trying to do the very best we can to uh, be good stewards of the tithe and offering that you give. Amen. Young people, you are about to prepare to close the school year, but keep in mind you ought to keep your mind sharp. Now, your school teachers like Ms. Party and others, Ms. May Helen Robinson and Ms. Worthy, they know it's important that they keep their mind sharp all summer. And I'm not sure the eventually going to change where you'll have only 30 days off for school. I personally, or for that, I don't think you need to be off too long. You don't need three months off. The devil is too busy. And this is my last advice on Mother's Day. Uh, I know you love your mothers. I know you're going to treat them right. But at the same time, young people don't allow other students to tell you that don't pay no attention to what your mom is saying. Let us stand. God be with you.